Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning and welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Bill Allen sitting in for Winston Chester this morning. This is Thursday, July the 11th. And uh, let's look at our weather report from Haney Technical Center. We got a high today of 87 with a low tonight of 75. And don't kid yourselves, it's a hot 87. The humidity's high, you need to really hydrate if you're gonna be out on the water outside anywhere. Wind west at five to 10, and that's holding pretty true. Uh, of course, now that we've got some ugly water to deal with, the winds aren't blowing anymore. So it's, it's a great time to be out there. Um, let's look at the uh, river readings today. Apalachicola is at 17.2 and uh, leveling off and should be dropping in a few days. The Choctahatchee at Carryville, it's at 14.2 and, and starting to come off a little bit. So uh, the, the same thing over there, you know, water's high, stuff's floating, be careful running around. But with this falling, uh, falling water over there, it's gonna be a great time to take some opportunities to catfish. Um, let's look at our peak fishing times today brought to us by Mark Cowart. Uh, 129 this afternoon to 329 and then 8.30 this after, tonight till 10.30 tonight. So both in the afternoons you got some great opportunities to get out on the water maybe if you can take off at lunch or uh, this afternoon. So we got, we got a great show lined up for you. We're going to talk about uh, some tips on how to fish this, this dirty high water, but also one of the best tips of the day, which should probably be the tip of the year, and i got a special guest to bring it to you. So let's take this break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm here with uh, a good friend and excellent fisherman, wonderful guy, to Captain Matt Smith. How are you doing this morning, morning, Matt? Doing well. I want to take a, a quick second and show the tide start chart before I start with Matt, brought to us by Kent Forrest Lone and my good buddy Greg Brudnicki. Uh, the high tide today is at 11.51 with a low tide tonight at 7.47. And we've got a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good tide. And that kind of leads into what Matt and I were going to talk about today is like the current conditions, what we're facing right now. A major, we've had a, a major change, obviously, with the, with the weather. It's kind of like, didn't we do this last year? We did this last year. We but had a great spring, and then we had, what, 20 inches of rain plus, but that was over five or six weeks. Over a long period of time, that's this right. This was over four days. Yeah, so unbelievable. Update on the conditions. Water color is? <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Pretty much. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, we... I went out the other day, Mark Cowart and I went out the other day to, you know, just to give this a look and give it a try. And, and you know, it's it, it's dark. It's dark. It, it's you, you can't see bottom at almost any depth out there right now. Wouldn't be that much of a of a challenge if we weren't so used to such clean, pristine, clear water. And a sight fisherman like yourself, not only this time of year, you're not sight fishing as much, necessarily looking at those fish all the time. But looking at the area, looking at bait, looking at the surroundings, you're totally you're totally blind. So it, it presents some challenges, but there's a lot of kind of unique things that, that, that come out of it, and kind of some of the things we can we can touch on. The water, you know, there's a lot of water. A lot of in water. The bay. Water's water. high, mm -hmm. and so you know you've got when the wind's not blowing. It's like I was saying in the beginning. You know, we had this gorgeous weather, and we had gorgeous water, and we had 20 mile an hour winds. Absolutely. Now we got five mile an hour winds. You just you, uh, you can't explain it. Yeah. There's a lot of grass floating out there, mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of hard to to top water fish. So. You got to change your techniques. You got to approach it differently Absolutely. now. And, and you mentioned bait too, and it's been kind of a slow year for bait, it right? It has very, very inconsistent, off and on. And, and just before the weather got here, it started to stabilize. Started, you know, things work. You know, because you, you, when summer really locks down, that that bait's just that much more key. And it was it was stable enough to where you could catch your bait and, and make you know make good trips. And the, the timing of that to come in and 
of course, the big weekend. Well, if it wasn't challenging, you know, it'd, it'd be easy. To That's do. it. Absolutely. But, and you, it's just it's difficult to get bait. It's, it's difficult, difficult to buy it, I think, and, it, and it's difficult to catch it because you can't you can't see it out there. That's right. And well, one of the things we'll touch on when we when we kind of get into it is the uh, is the, the pH of the water. That's something that I think a lot of people overlook, and and I don't fully understand it. But that kind of comes back from. Uh, bass fishing yeah. days and the, the acidity and essentially what all of that color in the water is is tannic acid from leaves right. from runoff and all, all through the coming out of the woods and cypress ponds things like that and I believe that pH that acidity being so out of balance as a result of all that fresh water is much more of an effect on the fish in general than most people realize and I think the bait is more sensitive to it than any of the fish and that they just don't they don't have a tolerance for it right they're gone yeah yeah you know they're they're pushed moving yep. to the salinity which yep. means a lot of times that they're deeper in it and you have no or, idea what it's or doing. out of this bay altogether that, well that's it, what i'm saying pushing out yeah 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 i, I believe that's the case you know that's uh, ph is one of those things that i don't fully understand mm -hmm. either but mm -hmm. i accept it mm -hmm. because it, it does it gets to there's a lot of fresh water out there winston commented you know he had a couple of breaks where he was over at the cape this weekend and and scalloping in st joe okay. and you know there that bay it, with the size of that pass if mm -hmm. you will it's a lot cleaner it yep. flushes out a lot quicker it does. but he said you know billy said i i hopped over and that water was cold I mean, yeah. it was cold. Yeah. there was a lot of fresh water in there and it was cold and a quick report on that uh they're, they're, the scallops are over there, and uh, I haven't been yet, but, you know, with my wife, we're headed just the first break that I get. But um, they're small right now, and, you know. Make a lot of sense to leave, leave them a little while, wouldn't it? It does. It, it's, it's, a, it's a situation where the, the scallops are a small size right now, and, and the meat's small in them. So, you know, it's like anything else, you know. Give them a break. Give them a week or two. Mm -hmm. Be selective when you get them. You know, get the bigger scallops, mm -hmm. and you know it'll it'll benefit everybody. But the other thing with the weather, there's not been that much pressure on them, right. especially with it opening early. So you right. don't have a ton of people over there picking them up. But, you know, just just conserve like you would with anything else. Now we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get into some t uh, techniques and tips that you can use right now to catch fish. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, now we got dirty water. We got a lot of water. We got good tide movement. Matt, what do you do? Well, first, the first thing first, you and I were just talking on the break and talking about being out there on the water. One of the toughest scenarios is to, and you, you've got to adjust yourself mentally because if you're out on the water all the time, like we are, you have a false uh, <laughs> expectation or perception of the way things are because of the the, con the conditions that we normally have. So. What I, what I, first thing first, your visibility, your advantage to see around and, and, and really gauge what's going on, pretty limited. It's all a lot like fishing in the dark in, in a lot of respects. So first off, you've got to rely on your knowledge. Now, I'm not always real big on fishing on past experiences or memories, and, and that's kind of a something for another day for a discussion, but you've got to rely on experience. Where have you had success this time of year in years past this you say in July you need to go to those areas that you have confidence in and you need to really slow down really slow down and fish those areas much more thoroughly than you would normally all of our fish in clear water they you know 98 percent of the the time they're they're relying on sight we have good clean water and they can see a long way. They're very aware of their surroundings and those fish will chase down a lure or a bait uh, most of the time. That's what's going on. Think about how limited their visibility is. And I know you brought some stuff with you and, and it goes right along with what I, what I do in this kind of water, but they've got to then turn around and rely on some other senses. That's Sound, it. Absolutely. smell. Absolutely, uh, the scent, the sense, uh, you say sound, also vibration, something moving well, in the water, they're gonna pick yeah. up it with, their, with their lateral line, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, another thing too is I think a lot of times you have opportunity, sometimes uh, off conditions create a little bit of opportunity in the sense that uh, 
I think you have a better chance of getting really close to some of these fish. A redfish <laughs> is not an easy fish to get close to. They've got a lot of pressure. They're in shallow water, usually clear. Most of the time, before you even see those fish, they're, they're getting away from, from you know, your, your uh, area where you can actually cast and catch them. These type of conditions, you're likely to have fish swimming up around your boat, coming to check out the boat if you're, you know, being fairly quiet. So it yeah. allows you to get in and, and really uh, get into some places and get around fish that you might not otherwise be able to, but you've also got to fish them differently. Yeah, because you can't see them. You can't see them. <laughs> you can't see them. It's, uh, uh, Mark Cowart and I were out yesterday afternoon, you know, and that's just... You know, I didn't want to go, but I went. I figured I was obligated to to do some research before we came on. Sure, you know, that's just the kind of guy that I am. <laughs> and uh, we caught one. Caught I fish. was telling you, caught it on a spoon. But we were in Mark's boat, in a very shallow boat. We were running the ground without knowing it. And you know, we had fish swirling around us, and that's the thing, man. We knew that those fish were out mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and and I threw. I threw everything in the book at them, you know, trying to, to entice them. But uh, what are some of your go-tos? Well, you know, we, I know in, in shows past we've talked about the, the popping cork. I know some people are a fan of it, some aren't. Hey, I'm here to tell you, water's dirty, you need to throw it. You, yeah. know, a couple you need to swallow your pride. Swallow your pride. That's the way you it's, feel it's, about it. Well, it's not my style of fishing, <laughs> but the reason, you know, I get a lot of people from uh, Texas, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, sure. and that's what they throw. And yeah. the reason it's so effective over there is because they have dirty, stained water all the, all time. the time. You get around the mouth of the Mississippi River over there, the water's dirty. That's why that's so effective. Those fish are relying on uh, sound, sure. vibration, and, and then their scent. Of course, most of the time, most people like to fish a gulp yep. underneath it, uh, some type of a scented soft plastic. That that can't you can't emphasize how important that is right now to to be able to effectively fish. And I I fish go and do fish gulp a lot, but uh, Mark uses and started me using uh, the Procure. Yep. Yep. And Absolutely. you can add that to your topwater baits. You can yeah, add it bait. to because you know like those three X baits and some of those are scented, but they're not necessarily like a gulp. Right. So you know you put a little stripe of that down there. Or, you know, on the baits that have the, the hook slits in the bottom, right. I just fill up that line through there. And that's really important right now is to put some scent in the water, but also uh, color. Absolutely. Well, that's, you know, talking about, I brought up just a bag of soft plastics, darker water. You want to fish a darker bait, a little bit of chartreuse when you've got this much color in the water, mm -hmm. certainly help. Um, yeah, that, absolutely. That, I'm a firm believer in trying to a, match the water, which is going to be difficult right now. As you, you can't fish anything too dark, absolutely. too red. And then, you know, on top water, instead of throwing, say, a walk, if you get in an area, like you say, there's a lot of grass, if you get in an area where you can throw something with hooks on top, I would go something more like a prop bait that's going to move a little more water than some of the more subtle baits that we use that more to walk the dog. That's an excellent tip right there, guys. You know, you can go to the big profile yep. top water baits with the rattles in them and things like that. And, yep. and you were saying earlier, you got to slow down. You got to slow down. You got to give those fish an opportunity. That's right. Because uh, they're not coming from yards away no. like they can when they see a bait that's working. Right. But, uh, and I didn't think about this. I'm glad you brought that on. You, you fish that with the prop on it? Absolutely. Little quick little jerks. Quick little jerks. And, and it, it creates a lot of activity. And, and the unique thing about that is if you find an area, say you find a pocket with some redfish in it, get in there, be really quiet, throw this. You have the ability to throw this bait and make one pop and just let those rings kind of mm -hmm. transmit out through the water, through that area, fish it really slow. Yeah. And, and you, you can do that. Notice it's a brighter color. Normally here with the clear water, I'm looking for natural, something that mimics a, a mullet or an LY, something yeah. like that, really natural. Now I'm using something with an orange belly, fire tiger type color. It's really gonna show up well in that in that dirty water. Yeah, uh, and that the uh, Top Dog series of baits, that She Dog mm -hmm. is one that, that I'll fish when it's like that. It's a big bait. And it's a higher pitch. And it's a higher pitch, mm -hmm. but it's black, with the chartreuse there head, the one that, that, that I like. And uh, the other thing about it is you can throw it a country mile. Absolutely. It's big. Absolutely. So, you know, you can really make a long cast, cover a lot of water with it. And again, 
you, you have to be selective because you're in an area where there's a lot of grass. I mean, you may only get 10 feet of, before you're covered up in grass. So, That's right. I mean, top water and that kind is a great way to make noise, but you're limited right now yeah. where you can do it at. You're limited. So you, you really want to get in, get in areas that you, you have confidence in, that you've caught fish in the past, and really just fish so much more thoroughly than you normally would slow down. Do what you know where you know. Absolutely. It's not a great time, Matt, that's exactly right, to be searching new places to fish. Mm -hmm. You're going to spend a lot of gas and, you know, a lot of time without <laughs> fish. Go do what you know. Go where you caught fish. That's probably number one tip before you get into all this. All right, we're going to take a quick break and come back continue this discussion with Matt. Here with Matt Smith talking about what you can do right now. So quick recap, Matt, do what you know. Do what fish, you know. Fish where you know, yeah. that's where you've caught fish before. Absolutely. Don't make noise in the boat, but make it in the water with your popping corks, you know, the prop baits, that kind of thing. And match the, match the color with your artificials, you know. Go right. dark, I'm like you, I like to have a little bit of chartreuse thrown in there. Absolutely. Uh, you know, as Matt and I were talking, you know, this is a good time to fish with somebody that you enjoy fishing yeah. with <laughs> and just being outside. You know, you, you have to lower your expectations. You do. I really want to jump into this. Matt and I were talking last night and, and he had, he said, man, I've got a great tip. And a lot of the tips you learn from experience. You do. Right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, like life's lessons, we're still learning them at uh, 31 here. You know, you, you, the ones you learn the hard way are the ones you don't forget. Hey, that, don't worry about it, man. It's 55 this weekend, and uh, most everything I learn is the hard way still. So, but let's get into this because it's important. I thought it was great. Now I want to spend some time on it. All right. Tell, tell us what the deal is here. Uh, well, last week, running along, fishing trip, and uh, early in the week, Looked down at my GPS unit and said, huh, I should be past that waypoint. I don't know what's going on. Realized that my screen on my unit was locked up, frozen. Mm -hmm. So I had never done that. So I thought, well, I'll just power it off, turn it back on. It'll pick back up and be good to go. Reasonable. Never came back on. Yeah. So first thing first, generally, especially with boats and salt water, you're thinking about just a connection, power source, something like that. Oh, go down to the retailer, go down, use their power source just to see, and uh, unit doesn't come on. It's it's fried. It's mm -hmm. done. Uh, it's a Garmin unit. Called up Garmin, and uh, they basically told me that the bad news is that they're unable to repair. They don't repair any of that stuff in-house anymore, and for all practical purposes, every bit of information that I had in that unit which is quite a bit of information. Quite right? a bit of information. Waypoints. Very valuable, yes. In, and some of it, you know, some of it I can go back and kind of feel my way around and, and eventually get reestablished, but for the most part, some of it can't be replaced. And uh, But what could you have done? I could have and should have, and what I hope everybody out there watching will do, learning from my bad experience, is back it up on an SD card uh, or a computer. And a lot of people don't know that you can back up your information on, on those better bottoms, and uh, the, bot, not GPS. That, that's right, and all of them have the capability now, anything relatively new, and, and surprisingly probably far back. It's, technology's been around for a while. Uh, my excuse for not doing it is, A, I'm too busy, and it's probably complicated. Probably involves some wires and some a computer program. No. Yeah. It, folks, it's too easy. It's uh, it's just a matter of a couple minutes and could save you and and do it if you if you sit down to do it do it two ways back it up on a card and then put it on a computer if you lose the card you yeah. got it on the computer yeah. if the computer crashes you got it the other way don't allow that to happen to you because it's just too easy to prevent so I, I've learned my I had a unit stolen that was the first time I lost all my information mm. this time it's crashed uh, the third time it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. From Wait. here on out, I'll never, I'll never let that happen. You spend a lot of time, yeah. a lot of effort. Yeah. And, you know, you mark spots, and, and you know, you, it's amazing now how much you rely. That's it on the GPS unit. We were talking about last night. And it, it goes beyond, it, you know, what you're saying. It goes beyond just locally here where you know where you're at. But you know what? Now is a perfect time because mine now have I've upgraded. It shows me the depths. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And when you can't see this water, there you go. Th it's a huge tool. But also, you know, 
it allows you to extend your fishing time. You can fish till after dark and have a much sure. better chance of being safe coming back and Absolutely. those kind of things. So, I mean, it's something that you rely on heavily, but man, I know how much information you had in it. Oh yeah, it's, it's uh, I'm still trying to get over it. It's one of the, it's just <laughs> yeah, he not. Was, he was despondent it's last not night. Not it's not something that you, uh, you know, for me, it's obviously very valuable and, and I'll, I'll recover, but <laughs> Uh, it's it's going to be going to be a long process. Yeah, and you know you go to your manual when you buy it, and as I learned, you can go online, mm. pull up the unit. You can look at the manual there, but there's also some valuable resources online because after I talked with Matt last night, I did that. You know, I, I checked it, but I had an issue like that before too, and I've got a good friend who is an engineer who's technically inclined there you and go. I am not. I'm the same way. And he was was talking to me a while back because he had this issue and it's a simple thing if you've got the card in there to be able to plug that into your computer. That's it. You just pop it in. That's I mean, it. if I can do it, I it's, promise you that you can do it's it. It's literally probably more simple than getting a new unit, turning it on and going through those prompts as far yeah. as, you know, the, the language, English, the, you know, the, the, every, it just, it's, it's as easy as anything you'll do with that electronic device. And to not yeah. do it is just, uh, there's no excuse. And, and it also brought up another thought, which is, which is what I do again, because somebody else had told me, I fish a lot of places that you know, when I'm out of town and, mm -hmm. and, and fish some of these tournaments, but just going to fish other places yep. that I don't know that well, um, I've got a, uh, a nice handheld yep. that I keep in the dry box there as a backup smart. if that goes out. That's smart. Because, um, you know, you, could, you can be wandering around places and relying on that GPS fairly heavily to get you back, and if it goes out, <clears throat> you know, then you have to rely on luck or, or pulling that it's a good idea to have a backup it certainly is good a, idea good a, good a tip as i know to give yeah and you know I, it I, I again i was fishing with mark cowart yesterday and uh we uh you know what matt We're out we've of done it again <laughs> but listen i we've uh, we've run over i appreciate you watching remind some, remember some of these tips to help you fishing and we'll talk to you later Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.